Welcome to episode 20 of How Far Can I Throw This? That far. It's not nearly specific enough. To figure out how long this Rubik's Cube is thrown, we're gonna need to figure out its exact air time. Throw starts right over here at eight and one thirtieth of a second. There it is nearing the end of its fall. The last frame where it's just barely visible is this little smudge here at 10 and a half seconds. Given that this is gonna hit the ground in just a few frames, the Rubik's Cube hits peak right over here at nine and eight thirtieths of a second. The total visible arc of the cube is 2.467 seconds and it reaches the peak in 1.233 seconds. Given the acceleration due to gravity and the fact that it would be falling for 1.233 seconds, we can calculate that it'd be traveling 39.7 feet per second by the time it reaches that last visible frame. There's only another six or seven feet to fall from that frame. The cube's gonna hit the ground in just another 0.165 seconds. This is a total airtime of 2.632 seconds. To figure out its horizontal velocity, we first need to take note of the fact that at the very start, the cube is about 390 frames from this scale. The time it reaches its peak, it's only around seven frames tall. And it's gonna be nearly 56 times further away than it is at the start. To figure out how far away his cube was at the very beginning, I took my own cube and recorded its size at various distances. And I overlaid that video onto his until I saw a size that matched exactly. It seems like right over here, the two cubes are the exact same size. Given that this this marker on my ruler is measuring 13 inches away from my camera. That puts his Rubik's Cube at 14, 15, 16, 17 inches away from the camera when he starts recording. Which means by the time it reaches his peak, it's going to be 947 inches away, or just around 79 feet. It's going to be a straight line distance from the cube to the peak, and we need to figure out its horizontal distance. And given that it took 1.233 seconds to reach its peak, we can use the acceleration due to gravity to calculate that the cube must reach a height of 24.48 feet above its initial throw. Now with this, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate that the horizontal distance must have been 75 feet. Now traveling 75 feet in 1.233 seconds means the cube must have been moving at a horizontal velocity of 60.8 feet per second for about 41 miles an hour. Even though we calculated earlier that the entire in-air time would be around 2.632 seconds, that means that that cube would be 160 feet away from him when it hit the ground.